Hello and welcome to our first episode, first video podcast for Gold Curtain. Hello Meva, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm full energy, super happy to be here and talk about all the topics. Me too, very happy to be with you today. We are going to share many things and what has been coming the last few weeks for us, filmmakers, for everyone, which is artificial intelligence. At first, that's something that, you know, can be scary. Artists are feeling afraid that they could be replaced and have less work. I don't think so. At Gold Curtain, we think we should embrace this tool. Those are just like new generation tool that can actually help our work go faster, get more speed, get more efficiency. And that's what we want to talk about in our video podcast. Exactly. That's everything. That's our tools. They are like new software. They are maybe a little bit more complicated, but they are tools to help us to have more time for fun and enjoy the life. We think that eventually what's the most important in the filmmaking is the message that you want to share, the way you share that message. And we need human to have a message to share. Last time I was on LinkedIn and I was um, reading a post of um, Andrew Miller. He formulated one sentence that I really liked. He said, we will always continue to be moved by human behind the curtain, mentioning about, you know, artificial intelligence. Mm, that's true, yeah. It's exactly, I think, what I have in mind. So today uh, we will talk about a few things, so stay with us because it's going to be really interesting. First, we would like to have a little new section where we will mention and show you a few new tools using artificial intelligence for visual and effects. We will show you our favorite ones. And then we will move on to a piece of advice for filmmaker who wants to do storyboard but don't necessarily know how to draw and how can they, you know, harness the power of artificial intelligence with a few software that we use and we will give you example with Meva. Yeah, yeah, this is like amazing, like how many new tools are coming like every week, like even for us who trying to have a focus on this is like difficult to, to, to follow everything. Mm -hmm. That's why we will definitely share uh, and talk about some of the new tools that we are thinking are cool or they bringing something new to, uh, to the AI world. Yeah. It's kind of overwhelming, right? All these tools and you don't even know which one you should start studying. Right? Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's impossible, you know, even to try everything. Uh, you, you need to, to choose like one software. They are like uh, some of the, the, the software or the programs they giving you uh, the possibility to use like some extension or mix. But the most important is, and that is the, the point that you need to have a vision of what you want to do and then totally. choose the, mm. the, the tool. Yeah, mm. It's not like, oh, let's try all the tool mm. and maybe something will come out. No, mm. you as a human, you need to know what you want and then mm. you have the possibility to choose uh, some uh, tool. 100%. It's easy to get lost in all what's coming out every week. So it's better to actually stay focused on what's your goal as a creator what you want to achieve, and then you will notice which tools could actually match your message and what you want to create. Exactly. This is what we want to talk uh, later about. It's like storyboarding. Storyboarding is like very important process uh, when when you are thinking to create like some content movie, mm. short movie. And uh, usually uh, it's very difficult to, to create this if you have no skills to draw. But mm. now with AI mm. and with some technique, there is the possibility that uh, you have uh, have your own storyboard that you will share with another member mm. of your team and everybody understand what actually you want to do yeah yeah let's yeah. you know let's take the best and uh, have uh, some some system that is like working for you when mm. you are thinking about the next step and uh, prepare yourself to do like some super cool stuff yeah 
Sure. The next section now, which is the news and where we are going to actually screen some examples of the best tools that we came to recently yeah, yeah recently because if we will start to talk about all the tools that, that yeah. started to come from from beginning just of just a little selection yeah, yeah like like something like usually we are focused on the visual uh, tools yeah there is like much much more happening about uh, another field of uh, life but we we are thinking about the the movie about the, the, the animation, about the visual art and uh, tools. All right, so we've heard about stable diffusion, mid journey, all what it can do, you know, create like crazy images, control net mm -hmm. came out so you can keep consistency on the characters. It was kind of madness the last few weeks, right? Yeah. Well, maybe two weeks ago, something new came out, which is called Dragon. Yeah. And what does it mean is you can actually put some points on the picture and drag um, the point so you can have a different result. Let me put that full screen. So here you can see the video example of a uh, Dragon website directly. It's amazing, yes. Like it's, it's crazy. I, I, I didn't try this. I, you know, I, I always need to try the tools to, to be sure it's working as a demo. Mm. Uh, but Wow, this is like game changer for, especially for people that they working with still image and they need to adjust like some of the picture if mm. this is really working in this case. Wow. The level of granularity that you can have now in the image creation with AI is becoming so precise. Yeah. I, re I remember last year when Mid Journey came out, it was all disgusting and low resolution and you couldn't have so much control but look at that like the way you can like shorten or like widen the dress directly yeah. it's you know this is something what probably like really talented photoshop artists can uh, do but we'll need to spend like like days to to achieve this uh super helpful yeah Definitely, it's a tool that's gonna also being explored and being developed even further. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm waiting really to test this uh, myself and see uh, what will be the output. All right, next uh, thing that we discovered that is pretty, pretty amazing that was created by Meta okay. um, maybe a month or two months ago, and it's called Segment Anything. And what does it do? It's that it cuts out every object in the image. Show me. And you are able to select all of that. So let me show you. Here we have demo. That's why uh, it's it's easy to, to check or it's really working. Exactly. So we show you in real but time. Yeah, as, as, as VFX artists, you know, this is also like very helpful uh, tool because I remember like 10 years ago, we spent like a lot of time to cutting out each of the elements mm. if there w w was necessary. Yeah, so what it does is basically when I hover the frame right here, it actually understands Already. in the image, right. if, even the sun, you see the sun, yeah. maybe you want the darker part of the sun or maybe the, the whiter part. Okay, that means like analyze the picture, mostly everything. Is and intelligently, look how the, you know, the, the yeah. stick of wood, what's pretty amazing to me, it, it can detect that there is the nose of the dog in the middle and this part is cut out from the other part on the right, but still he can understand that's the same object. Uh, and that's amazing. Look, if I click up, it's selected. So wow. that's crazy. Nice. I select the dog, you it's, select uh, This is working only for still picture or uh, you can use this for animation. So this one is segment anything is only for still picture. Okay. But now I'm going to show you what is called track anything and that was developed further based on segment anything from Meta. All right. And what the guy did is that he applied this for video. So as you can see on the video example, the GIF example, um, all the characters are detected automatically. Probably he prompts something like characters and it would detect all the separated characters and you know, just rotoscope them through the, the full se video sequence. And that is incredible. Like, I'm so excited of that because that's something we use in VFX every yeah, day, right? Like, like time saver, yeah? Like, if, if you can do this, like, really fast or you can do this in background and really focus to, to composite something, to make something more beautiful or get, like, some uh, ideas, 
Yeah. That's Even in animation, good. like uh, the current project I'm working on, I have to rotoscope my characters first. Yeah. So even for animation, you can do so many things like this for the compositing later. Here's an example of how he used that a video in painting of um, track anything, you can see how you can also get the clean slate behind it, which means the background would be reconstructed oh. after getting the character taken That's out. That's mean like like it's, it's preparing for you clean plate that you can uh, you can use later to to exchange the main object or even yes. I'm not I'm not so familiar with clean plate and stuff since I come from the animation world but can you tell us like is it a big thing like does it take a lot of time yeah, to let's, create a clean Yeah let's let's imagine that we have like this uh, guy that doing parkour and we want to exchange him to some robot or some another mm. object that's mean you need to erase him and before you needed to to shoot clean plate that's mean like the plate without him mm. and then uh, shoot uh, the take with him right and then you Two know frame takes. by frame adjust this mm. track the shots and and have like some clean background frame and, by frame yeah and add uh, cg on the top yeah so that would take like two days for one shot oh that's depend yeah like some of of the shots take like much much longer mm. uh, it's it's really a very very helpful tool yeah, that's very interesting because now it can be almost instant. We haven't tried this tool, but it looks like the job could be done very fast by this AI. Okay, next yeah. tool. Have you heard about this, Mel? Yeah, that, that's the, uh, the, the tool that Blockade they Labs. actually I, I, I spent a little bit time to, mm -hmm. to, to try. And uh, Can you tell us what it is? It's working really nice. A very helpful tool where uh, you have like a camera in the middle on on an environment and you can create everything around you, only prompts and uh, choose the style of mm -hmm. uh, the elements. I think will be really very helpful for, for game development. Mm -hmm. Can we show our audience directly how it would look like? Yeah, let's maybe, we are in Tokyo, let's write like, uh, Shibuya at night and let's see uh, in cyberpunk style okay. what, what will so I will night. type Tokyo Shibuya street uh, at night cyberpunk as a prompt and yeah. then you can choose the style here right yeah let's, let's check this. cyberpunk and yeah. click generate and what it does now is that the AI is generating a 360 map. Exactly, 360. That means you can use it and, and uh, look around. Yeah, you can use it in any 3D software to 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 have like some reference how to build the environment. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not 3D. Yeah, we need to understand this. This is still like image, like flat Boom. image. It's done. All right. So it's not only a 16 by 9 picture like Mid Journey could do or like Stable Diffusion could do. It would be very convenient to map those textures on some 3D later, right? As camera mapping. You what know, you if, if you can, you can get uh, like the 3D models of this and the texture as uh, text, uh, like in this picture as texture, oh, that will be the, the, the game. Uh, that looks changer, pretty. Yeah pretty Shibuya like right with all this this uh, screen actually r recognize the Shibuya round screen like this yeah it's so interesting all right next tool the final one that we wanted to talk about the new generative uh, function of Adobe right you know they they need they they need and I think like every like uh, software developer working on, on AI right now because with with our like looking what is uh, going on the market, they they need to react to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you can actually do now is you would make a selection around something in your frame. So here he's like extending the background because he doesn't have sure. enough pixel in the resolution. Here he selects the character and describes something that he wants. Here he would add. You can select something and add a sign, and it comes out pretty realistic right that it's very rare that the result is not um, not good enough i think for a start it's pretty good and you have different option every time it generates like three or four different options for you and you can you can use that this is like like in traditional way 
you can do this mm. without any problem, but you need to spend time to look for the picture for stock uh, mm. footage. Yeah, then you need to find the stock footage that match the perspective. And here, like mostly the tool making everything for you, but mm. the question is, or you will get what you have in the mind, or you are able to describe in uh, prompts what you want and you will get this. Exactly. So there is a huge like amount of time saving with these tools. And that's where the power is. It's almost like you can have something instantly now when you think about something. Yeah. You just need to think the right way, have a, a proper direction for what you want, and the machine will create it for you. Yeah, the generative feel is like, wow, this is super good tool right. because I remember there was always a problem to to to, to mm. feel to make the picture bigger when it yeah. was missing it was possible, but you needed to have like really good uh, Photoshop skills to. And now it's coming also it. for the video, obviously in few months. Yeah. Okay. Shall we, shall we move to the next section? Yes. All right, Mev. Within all these AI tools, we've been, you and me, we've been, of course, like looking around, trying to help our work go faster and explore. And at the moment, I'm currently working on a personal movie uh, using artificial intelligence. I tried to use Mid Journey as a tool for storyboarding. Oh, oh yeah. Hmm. Just because I wanted to see how it would look like. Not okay. that I, you know, I cannot doodle and I think still doodling is faster. Yeah. But what is interesting with those AI tools is you can actually uh, drop some incredible, good looking images for the team you are working for or yeah. as a as a communication um, tool, you know? That's mean like storyboard for me is like, uh, like the information for you have like your vision and you want to have like the picture to plan like you should to show for another people what kind of camera position, what we see inside. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I wanted to um, try Mid Journey out and okay. see what's coming out from Mid Journey and how it would look like a storyboard. So I'm going to show you this right now. And then I'm going to give some tips to use the storyboarding tool. Um, you know, even someone who doesn't have skills to draw well can use these tools to actually uh, create wow, something interesting. This looks like super nice, actually. So this is one of the shots, you know, I try to do for the for the little commercial I'm doing right now. It's a spot, spot ad and I'm working with a dancer. So I try to have different angles just to give me some ideas of how it would look like, you know. Yeah. So this one, for example, is a close up on the shoe uh, near from the floor. I'm going to uh, give you the, the prompt example after. This one was more, you know, wow. from the back. <clears throat> so I wanted her to have a hoodie and be a woman, you know? So it's interesting because, because you say it's a woman dancer wearing a hoodie, it, Mid Journey would still give you some information about being a woman, like the hair coming out from the hoodie like this. Here, a little bit weird because it's coming out from the back, but you know, it's interesting. And then you can bounce on those images to create further images that would look even closer to what you are looking for. Um, this one is more like a wide angle shots from the front. And I wanted to show the dancer in the middle of the street, in the middle of empty street, actually, that's what I wrote. So there's still some people, but what it tells to me, Journey, is that there is not so many things behind her. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know, gives her a lot of space for um, expression. How, how much control you had about the, the frame? You can describe like what you want to see in the background, what is the, the light? You uh, could. If you really want, you can add what you, what you would like to see in the background. Okay. There are techniques to, to emphasize the strength of each section of what you want. All right. But on this one, I went like very easy, you know. So this one was a dancer walking uh, in the middle of an empty desert road. And I actually like the rendering, you know, it was like pencil sketch drawing. This one is more looks like very a, nice. It yeah. looks amazing, right? Yeah. It looks like someone drew it for real. Uh, this one, I think it was more like charcoal. I tried a different, okay. you know, rendering technique. And uh, you can see the composition is it's quite good, right? So how did I achieve that? Actually, I used a little trick to make it more to make it look more cinematic. And here's my prompt. So I use the trick um, 
right here. The trick is to prompt a movie storyboard sequence sketched in pencil, okay. showing. So that would be the base of your prompt. And after that, you put whatever you need uh, for further information. So here you can see um, perspective, dynamic, that's all the keywords that I wanted to remember. Uh, cinematic lighting, uh, backlighting, depending on what kind of lighting you want, which is amazing, right? You can even decide of the lighting and try out how it would look uh, before to, to shoot it in, yeah. in, uh, in live. And you can, you know, put all the informations of framing. You can say wide angle, uh, long shot, 50 millimeter shot, um, close from the ground, satellite shot, like, you know, more from the, the view in um, high angle. How, how, how long it took to create like all these uh, frames? Uh, just a few minutes, you know, you just need right. to figure out, you know, drop a prompt, see how it comes out. And, uh, and that's pretty amazing. Here's the prompt again, a movie storyboard sequence sketched in mm. pencil, the kind of technique you want to use, showing, and after showing, you place everything you want to see. A hip hop dancer wearing a nice dress, sports shoes in the middle of a street, coma, people in the background or cars in the background mm. and see what you come out with. Nice, nice. Looks like visually super nice. You know, mm. I, I, I wish to see like the whole sequence of mm. one scene to see like yeah. or you can keep the constant sense. I wanted to introduce a little bit of your work, your test. That yeah, you yeah, did. yeah. Actually, you know, when you when you told me about the, uh, the storyboard, I was thinking, like wow let's let's try maybe uh, on, on my side and I will use like another uh, tools uh, stable diffusion I approach this in this way that I was looking for uh, uh, some uh, reference that's mean like I was looking uh, uh, on Google image for for images that, that I like where you already have like the perspective you have mm -hmm. the camera position mm -hmm. and you have like the main subject that's mm -hmm. mean like uh, my, my my idea for this short storyboard was like a car chasing in uh, the city mm -hmm. uh, I, I find like this for a picture and then uh, I ask uh, stable diffusion to to create uh, uh, four frames they looking very constant mm. and after this test which I'm thinking you know it's, it's working like really nice and everybody can understand what uh, what mm. you want to sh show in each of the shot after this test I, I, I started to think like oh okay what if I have like my actors could I make the storyboard and keep uh, constant the, the actors that mm -hmm. we can recognize that's actor A, that's mm. actor B. Mm. And then I, I made like next test, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, the prompt was only like people in Tokyo on, on the top of, uh, of some rooftop. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thinking, you know, this somehow looks very similar and probably you can understand that we have like the, the main hero in each of um, these uh, frames. They, mm -hmm. they it's like a different Yeah, it's very situation. similar to me. I don't see... And, and, and the funny thing is, uh, you know, you, you will never guess what kind of reference I use for, for to create like these frames. Because then when you see the reference, you are thinking like, oh, I, I'm personally, I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's still not constant. It's, it's still uh, different. Like, look this. Wow. That, 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 that's are like, like my frames. Yeah. That, okay. Th th these are like the frames. You can see that it's like very similar, the mm -hmm. framing. Of course, I ask uh, to, to change only the, the location and mm -hmm. uh, the location is, uh, is Tokyo, should be Tokyo, it's a mix mm -hmm. of Tokyo, but you can feel this is ASEAN city. But when you, you see, we have always here like the, the one main hero. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure, you know, the, the, this, this is really working, but... Uh, but it's interesting, you know, like, can you tell us what did you use? What tool did you use to do that? Oh, it's, it's only, you know, like, like uh, stable diffusion and, you know, the setup was that you should follow like the the main frame, yeah. 
Okay, it's, so it's that's pretty nothing cool. nothing big, it's you, super easy. I, I spent maybe like 15 minutes to create this. If it's just for you, right? If it's not for using for clients or something no. like this, you take just random images and try out how it would look for your storyboard. That gives you some ideas of the framing and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I want to say that, you know, doing storyboard in the normal way, that means when the director is working with the storyboard artist, is very creative process mm. because they, you know, th there is like the vision of, of, of the director and there is like storyboard mm. artist who is telling you like, oh, well, but maybe let's do this. Maybe this will be work mm. better. Yeah. You have like much more interesting and probably successful brainstorming about this. Mm. This is only machine. It's doing what you want. Yeah. The next uh, things that I was thinking what I can do is actually to shoot something, shoot some footage on mm -hmm. the white background, only with the actors, with still picture, still picture with the, the, the position of camera that I like, mm -hmm. and then change this to, to, to storyboard uh, look. But exactly, as yeah. I said, this is only like some effects that, that you can use also in uh, Photoshop mm. to make something looking like a graphic or comic style. Mm -hmm. But of course you are not able to, to, to shoot this on location. That's why you can use the stable diffusion mm. to change the location. Do you know? Mm. I wanted to have Tokyo top uh, rooftop mm -hmm. and you know you can feel that the 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 graphic that i prepare mm. is looks like like rooftop looks like uh the city in the background yeah that's why this is helpful like mm. if you need you can location, visualize in advance. exactly you can you can shoot only the main characters and mm. then uh, visual the the location Okay, it's working. cool. This is another technique using image-based reference to exactly. get some ideas yeah. in pre-production. And on the other side, you have mid-journey where you text prompt and you have like full versatile kind of ideas and creativity out there. We, we need to, you know, to try to mix both of the technique and mm. see what will come out. Yeah, because yeah. visually uh, your your test was much, much, much nicer. Yeah, looks like really something what was drawn by human. I, I really like this, this uh, you know, it keeps the blurriness in the foreground. It's really, really cool. Let's wrap it up. Uh, thank you for today, Meva. We, we really hope that those information were useful, that you can start seeing AI as a great, great tool to uh, speed up your work instead of, you know, fearing the change. We really believe that we should embrace the change. Those tools are not going to disappear anytime soon. It's only you know, coming more and more every week. The question is, how do we use those tools? This, this tool, sorry for my weird accent. We want to use these tools ethically with being mindful for the creators, for the people who own the copyrights. And we should create all of that together by being mindful, being respectful of the work of other people. That's also a very big topic that we are going to talk in the next episodes with some of our guests. So think about it, try out one of those tools for yourself, see if it can help your process of creation. AI and all the tools are only here to help you. The idea and the vision need to come from you. We will see you in the next episode with Meva.